Tina, the four questions I've been asked to ask you from uh, Grain Essay Boys. First of all, why was the marketing of Agricultural Products Act stopped and will it be revived? We absolutely need to revive the Act. Um, there's about 20 pieces of legislation which was ready to go to Parliament. Unfortunately, the Portfolio Committee uh, spent a lo an enormous amount of time firstly on the VETS bill and when it came to the feeds and fertilizer bill we thought that they just um, went over the top in terms of engaging with that bill. So after five years they've only passed one bill. Twenty pieces of legislation would now have to wait until the second, the next session of Parliament. I'm very disappointed because a number of the acts which govern us are unconstitutional. And it was an ideal opportunity for us to clean up our act. Unfortunately, um, as a member of the executive, I do not have the final say on when a law goes through Parliament. Once I've taken it through Cabinet, it is then sent to the Portfolio Committee and um, it's been disappointing that the Portfolio Committee could only do one bill. I'm struggling to get the amendments to the Marine Living Resources Act through so that we could give fishing quotas to the villages, the fishing villages. I hope that we'll be able to get the act through by the end of October. All right, now the other uh, question that the guys wanted to know, they were very heavily involved, Grain Essay, with the recapitalisation programme. They got a clean audit from government and yet they're being prevented from continuing with it and they're very curious as to why. It's almost like being punished when you've done something good. Unfortunately, the recapitalisation programme is managed by the Department of Rural Affairs, um, Land Reform and Rural Development. I have um, in fact requested that Grain SA be used as a preferred service provider because of the very good work they have done. We, we cannot have failed land reform projects any longer. So the projects we are doing now centers around commercial farmers who are skilled and trained, assisting us to transfer the skills to our land reform beneficiaries. Grain SA has done a sterling job in Northwest. They should be contracted to do much more work. Um, I'll certainly be recommending to the Minister of Rural Development and Land Reform I'll be recommending Grain SA to him again. Thank you. The, the last question I need to ask you now, because I get a lot, you know, there are 2,400 uh, black uh, farmers that uh, belong to Grain SA, and um, I continually get phone calls from them asking what government intends doing to assist black farmers with the rights to land. They are currently farming as well as land that is unused. Because as you know, without land ownership, they can't raise capital money for equipment and so on at the banks. Now, I know this is an issue that came up today at the breakfast on the SABC, and I know it's an issue that goes on and on and on and on, but there has to be some point where these guys have to see daylight. The Minister for Rural Development and Land Reform uh, presented Cabinet with two draft bills um, about a week ago. The new bill highlights the different types of ownership of land. As a Minister for Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries, I would have hoped that people receive title deeds and ownership of the land. Once you have ownership, you'll be prepared to invest in the land. You're never going to invest in something that you're renting no. or leasing. So we should either give people title deeds or ownership of the land 
or long-term leases. Can we not put checks and balances in those long-term leases where they can raise money that if you don't use it, you forfeit it? So in other words, farmers who take land will forfeit it if they don't use it. The uncanny situation we have is the split between agriculture and land. So it's land is... It's a strange is, split because it's all one and the same. The, the view was that land is just, it's not exclusively agricultural land. And um, the broader concept of land use was taken into account. I would, I would still really want um, agriculture to be a little bit more um, circumspect in how they approach the matter on land. I've spoken to commercial farmers already. The response shouldn't be um, government trying to edge us out of agriculture. We are allowing a 1.3 billion package to, as a, a mechanism to stimulate agriculture. 1.3 billion for commercial farmers to implement um, expansion programs, biofuel programs, but to have partnerships with black farmers and to create and retain jobs. Are you saying that there will be a reward system for those farmers that assist black farmers? We are tired of land reform projects which do not work and the only way we'll be able to sustain agricultural, successful agricultural prop, uh, uh, any project is through working and partnering with skilled white commercial farmers and to give them an incentive will allow them to cover their, their, their costs. How will you give an incentive? Because the, I, can th I think of a number of ways, uh, cheaper fuel, uh, cheaper electricity, uh, tax relief. Now that m involves a lot of other departments, which I'm sure you don't want to go delving in their uh, areas. So how will you give those rewards? The quick game changers that we discussed in Cabinet is to bring a pool of ministers who all impact on the agriculture sector into a meeting with firstly the private sector and secondly the organised agriculture. Last one which is a very sticky one that I'm going to throw at you here before we move on to much nicer things. Isn't part of the problem, and not only with your Department of uh, Agriculture, Forest and Fisheries, isn't part of the problem when it moves down to the DGs and those departments, it gets blocked a lot of things. You have good intentions, but then the, those good intentions are spot when it gets to a lower level. Our government departments have been incredibly weakened over the years through the loss of skilled staff and through the loss of expertise. Transformation is good. But I think in some instances we, we dropped the ball and we threw the baby out with the bathwater. So we have established elaborate and huge government departments with so much red tape that it's almost impossible to have a decision taken, let alone implemented. Is this now a change of heart from government that we're going the other way now where we've realised what the mistakes we've made? Hindsight is better than no sight. And if we're not going to be evaluating our work and we continue in this fashion, we're heading for a disaster. Absolutely. So we, you have seen that the monitoring and evaluation department of the president is doing stricter monitoring and stricter evaluation which is very transparent and I am over the moon about it. We, we have um, a, 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 an administration that is fairly incompetent. Will you bring a stakeholders committee to play here where all those with a vested interest in the farming community, for instance, and the fishing community and the forestry community all have a little stakeholders committee that they could report to you? I meet regularly with committees um, which are representative of the farmer unions. 
There are so many stakeholders in agriculture and it's impossible for me to meet all of them individually. So I would want such a stakeholder forum. We've been developing the CEO forum quite uh, well, but it's not where we want it to be. The yeah. CEO forum was supposed to be that stakeholder forum for the industry to engage with the minister. My recommendation to Grainius A is to remember that we intend putting a million hectares under production, crop production, and it has to be grains. We cannot overlook Grain SA. They're the most important structure that we need to talk to right now.